At the heart of any audio patch in PD is the use of oscillators. Oscillators are used for their own sake to generate sounds. They're also used to shape other oscillators in terms of amplitude, uh, to ramp sounds up and down, and also they're used to combine with other oscillators to create really interesting and rich sounds. We'll also use oscillators to read tables, um, to read back samples, or to read samples at different rates. So they're really, really useful. We'll get started by using a simple sine wave generator and we'll create an array to view the output of that uh, similar to an oscilloscope. I've got the audio engine uh, portion of the patch up in the top left and this will enable me to turn on and off the audio engine. If the audio engine is off, the oscillator is off also. So that's an important thing to remember when you're scripting your own patch. So I'll create the oscilloscope by choosing put array and I'll name it OSCIL Okay, put it in the bottom left portion of the patch. Now I'll create a sine wave generator, which is OSC tilde, and the creation argument is the frequency, so 440, get a, a natural. Now I'll create an onv object to look at the amplitude coming out of this particular oscillator, and then use a number atom to see the results. Notice how there's nothing working right now. That's because the audio is off. So let me turn the engine on. And now you see that the amplitude is at 96.98. Um, 100 would give us 0 dB, very pretty loud. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this. So I'll leave the audio engine on. The last thing I'm going to do is actually connect it to the DAC so we can hear it. When you're working with audio, you just have to be really cautious about um, sending things straight out to the DAC so you can hear it because there's, a, there's very little room for error. You might blow your speakers, hurt your hearing. So just be careful. So now I'll create a multiplication audio object, which is star with a tilde. And I'll pipe the output of OS into the left inlet. Nope, not the right inlet, the left inlet. And now I'll create a V slider as a volume slider. And right click that, choose properties. You have to do this next step. If you don't do this, you're gonna kill your, ear, your hearing. For the top of the range, I'm gonna choose 0.5. And I'll change the height to 50. Okay, pipe this into the right inlet. And adjust, okay. Now I'm gonna switch the onv object so that it is now affected by the result of the multiplica multiplication. Now take a look at the number atom. You see that we're going from a smaller value to a larger value. Okay. So now what I, if I want to use a VU meter, I'll need to take the result of on and subtract 100 from it. and then take the result of the subtraction and pipe it into VU. And as I move the slider up and down, you can see the result. And if I wanted to, I could take and right click the slider again, and let's say from 0 to 0 0.1. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it actually it is. So there we go. So now you're probably wondering what this sounds like. So now it's time to create a DAC object. DAC tilde and one and two. I like to specify the channels. It's a personal habit of mine, um, but you don't have to. By default, it'll choose channels one and two. But I do some multi-channel stuff. It makes sense for me to do one and two. Okay, so when I connect it, you should hear it. and slide it up. If I turn the audio engine off, all audio is stopped. There's no audio generation. Turn it back on, and then we hear it. Okay, so I'll decrease the volume. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create uh, some objects that'll read this to, or write this to the OSL table. To do this, tab write tilde, O-S-C-I-L, and this will write to the OSL table 
when there's a bang. So we're going to use metro 50 milliseconds. So every 50 milliseconds, we're going to be writing to the oscill table and then create a toggle. Now, if you don't know this already, when we take a look at this oscill table, the x-axis is the frequency and the y-axis is the amplitude. So, as soon as we start writing to this table with zero amplitude, we're going to get pretty much this flat line. But as we increase v-slider, our shape should get taller. Okay. And now we'll take the output of the multiplication and pipe it into tab right oscill. Make sure the audio engine's on and bang the metro. And now you can see a result from oscill. I'm going to disconnect this from the DAC and adjust the amplitude significantly. Disconnecting it from the DAC because I don't want us to actually hear the result because it's going to get really loud. But I just want to show a dramatic example. So from 0 to 1, as I scale this, you can see really how dramatic this particular uh, waveform could be in terms of amplitude. A few other cool objects we can use. Uh, before I continue, I want to right-click this again, choose Properties, and change this back to 0.1. Play it safe. We can, use, um, we can use messages that have new frequencies. So I can type, for instance, 660 and bang that into oscill. And that will give us a different frequency. Let me connect this back. That's one way to do it. We can just use the, the frequency. Another way is to use an object called MTOF. That's MIDI to frequency. So this is going to accept MIDI note number. So we'll feed 60, which is middle C, into this. And you'll notice that the, the outlet of MTOF isn't dark gray. And we need, uh, that means it's not audio. And we need audio input for OSC. Um, so we're going to use an object called sig tilde, and that's going to take control rate um, input and then output in terms of frequency. So now I'll turn it up and bang, and there we go. And I can do another. Oop. And this message isn't working right now because SIG is constantly sending information into OS. So this message box is competing with that. If I disconnect it and then send it then it'll work. So you just have to be aware that all of these um, oscillators are continuously sending information into their objects.